And in breaking news at this hour, South African hotel magnate Saul Kersner has died of cancer. He was aged 84. Kersner died at his family home at Leukopia Estate in Cape Town, surrounded by family. Kersner is the founder of the Southern Sun and Sun International. His family says at his own request and in light of the global health crisis, the funeral will be kept private and small with only immediate family in attendance. So let's get more details on that. We have the Kersner family spokesperson, Ian, on the line. Ian, thanks a lot for joining us this evening. Uh, quite a sad time for the entire family and a huge loss, I think, to the hospitality industry as well as business in general. Yes, you're right, Faith. This is a very sad evening. Um, I'm speaking to you from London, but uh, I was not able to get up to South Africa because of the restrictions. But obviously, my heart goes out of the Kersner family at this very sad time. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about the contribution that Saul made, particularly um, in entrepreneurship. We're not even just going to say the hospitality industry, is it? Because he was quite known as the maverick. That's correct. You know, he was a guy who I think uh, never shied away from new challenges. You know, in his life, which spanned uh, his, his professional life, sorry, which spanned six decades, he established well over 80 hotels around the world and more, in more than a dozen countries. So he, you know, he took um, what he had learned and developed in South Africa, the very first hotel, the Beverly Hills in Umschlunga Rocks, uh, through the Southern Sun days, which Southern Sun at that time had over 7,000 hotel rooms and over 30 hotels, and he expanded that into a global empire that was really, I think, um, respected and, and admired by many of the world's best hoteliers. Mm. And one would say that he was also known as a somewhat of an innovator, very visionary in his approach. Absolutely. You know, he, he did some crazy things, people would say. I mean, he was the first guy to to stage a golf tournament which, uh, with a prize money of a million, uh, a million dollars, which in its time was just uh, unheard of. Uh, he brought uh, famous entertainers to South Africa. And, of course, he ran Sun City in a completely non-racial um, framework and, and, and you know, got the place on the map, got South Africa on the map with his hotels around, around the country. So I think he was um, certainly a maverick and certainly someone that uh, people, you know, will always uh, look up to and will remember. Mm. Who was the man behind the, the business, uh, Ian, in your opinion? You know, I think he's, uh, he was frankly um, a guy who, who was actually really quite a private person. He was a guy who you know, had an extraordinary uh, intellect and an ability to to really see the path um, to to doing what he he loved most, which was, you know, being hospitable to people and and providing what uh, true hospitality. He had a motto which was sort of blow away the customer, and you know, Saul believed in big things, but he was also a guy who you know got into the detail and really um, you know every single piece of the puzzle had to be figured out. Uh, there were no shortcuts for him. He was also a guy who had a great sense of humor. He liked to laugh. He was a great friend. Uh, he was someone who had a temper and, uh, you know, would let people have it if he was unhappy with them. But, you know, he was one of those guys where you always knew where you stood with him. And uh, I think that was what was so special about this wonderful man mm. and what we'll all miss about him. A bit of a softer side. I believe that uh, at age 12, he actually played in uh, the Johannesburg uh, Symphony Orchestra. Yeah, that's correct. That's <laughs> something that most people don't know. Uh, and, you know, what was kind of uh, typical of the dichotomy of the man was that he was playing in the Johannesburg Symphony Orchestra, but also, of course, was um, boxing at his school in Bears Valley in Johannesburg and became the uh, welterweight championship of Fitvaris Rant University. So, you know, he had a, both a tough side, and the, and the tough side, I think, was somewhat out of self-defense. He grew up in a tough neighborhood. He had, um, you know, very poor family. His, his parents were shopkeepers and uh, he learned to box kind of out of self-defense. Self but then, of course, uh, you know, the softer side of, uh, of his love of music and his love of trees and his love of, um, you know, creating these incredible environments in nature um, in, in places like uh, the Pilansberg and, and other places around the world. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what could we attribute his visionary ways and his um, business acumen to, um, uh, Ian? And just simply because, I mean, at the age of 26, Saul then was the one that spotted opportunity within the hospitality industry when it was not even heard of at the time. So one wonders, at 26, was he that self-actualized to actually come up with some of the brilliance that we get to see and witness within the hospitality industry today? Yeah, no, it's difficult to say because you're right. I mean, at, at age 26, you know, he saw this, uh, you know, Omshanga Rocks was uh, sugarcane fields in those, in those days. There was nothing out there. And he decided to build this hotel, and he had traveled to the States uh, on one trip only before building the hotel. And he'd gone literally to the famous hotels uh, in the world in the Miami area and understood what people were doing there. And he said, you know, this can work in South Africa. We have the people. We have the climate. Uh, we have uh, all these natural uh, assets in, in South Africa, and there's no reason why we can't do this. Um, and he, of course, um, did exactly that. He brought, he brought an international standard hotel to South Africa and then grew the industry from then on over a 60-year career. Yeah. But yeah, it's before difficult we let you to go. say why he did it. You yeah. know, he did it because he believed in it. Absolutely. Before we let you go, um, just any form of uh, uh, confirmations regarding the funeral arrangements and uh, the details surrounding the memorial or the burial of Sol Yes, yeah, sure. So the, the funeral is a very private uh, affair just for, the, just for the family, and I think that's also you know, to do with the state of crisis we're in in South Africa and the world at the moment with, uh, with this COVID-19 awful virus and all I can say is I encourage people to please take this seriously and to wash your hands and and be you know follow the advice of the medical professionals so the funeral will be private um, and uh, nobody's going to be invited to that for those for those reasons of health and safety there will be a memorial um, that will take place and we will make announcements about that in due course it's a little bit too soon to say but there will be a memorial that will be um, will be held in in the future for Saul to honour him. Well, Ian, thanks a lot for uh, shedding some light in terms of the life um, well lived uh, by Saul Kersner. There, Ian Douglas, who is the Kersner uh, family spokesperson, giving us uh, the latest in terms of those uh, funerals as well as memorial details. Uh, this is following the death of uh, Saul Kersner.